All right, let's take a look at our daily updates on the state of law and order during this lockdown period. I'm joined by anti-crime activist Yusuf Abramji from Make SA Safe. Uh, so, Yusuf, just tell us, what's the latest on community policing forums during the lockdown period? Can CPF members actually go out and work? Good afternoon, Shahan. We'll know that uh, the Minister of Police said uh, about two weeks ago that community police forums cannot work under the lockdown. That's for a lot of anger from CPF across South Africa. The minister said that he was engaging the national leadership, but it appears that uh, how many days into the lockdown that the government has not taken a decision. Now, the Gauteng Community Police Board has issued a statement um, slamming the decision of the minister and saying that CPFs are regulated within the law. So there is a structure and they can see no reason why CPFs cannot operate under the current circumstances. In fact, to the contrary, CPFs can be very useful. Uh, and I echo that particular viewpoint because CPFs, the most of them do superb work. The government talks of community police uh, partnerships, and yet they are not allowed to work, not even the chairpersons of, of, of the particular area. Uh, neighborhood watchers, the minister said, are not regulated by law that I can understand. They can't even work, but there seems to be no resolution, and that's got many CPFs up in arms, Shahan. Yeah, it's good to have the clarity, Yusuf. Thanks for that. So criminals, of course, will use scams to cash in during this period. What are some of the latest tricks that you're seeing? Well, we know that the ENCA uh, extensively covered how some people were issuing fake permits. Uh, they were charging people for permits. But now with any crisis and with any emergency, the criminals are trying their luck. Cybercrime is very, very rife. So be very alert. If you get an SMS or a WhatsApp message on an email purporting to be for, from the bank saying that you are allowed to make a COVID-19 uh, claim or you can get some relief, please do not click on those links until you verify it with the bank directly. Many of these criminal syndicates are sending mail. They want you to click on it. It takes you to a what looks like a fake uh, or a genuine website, but it's fake. They then try to access your bank details, your personal details, and before you know, your money will be out of your account. So be very careful when you get these messages. Also, with all the food, food relief work uh, and the donations underway, credible uh, donations are being called for. Some of these criminals are trying to uh, come up with uh, credible names, with credible NGOs, with fake certificates. Do not donate to those organizations. And that is why, you know, I say that the HCI Foundation, for example, is a good example of where a credible charity is heading up this campaign. So make sure that when you give a donation, you give it to a credible one. But be, be careful of these scams. They are becoming very ripe. And just alone today, I had a lot of people saying that they got messages uh, wanting um, them to click on this link and it happens to be fake. And very quickly, Yusuf, I'm running out of time. Border patrols report 80% increase in tobacco and alcohol smuggling. No surprise there. What do you know? Major problem. We spoke about the smuggling that is very, very right. It appears because of the ban on cigarettes and alcohol, these criminals are smuggling in from neighboring countries. Some seizures have been made by the South African National Defense Force. And now with the deployment possibly of 70,000 plus. We hope that the borders will be strengthened and also many communities like the Western Cape are calling for increased soldiers to be patrolling following the looting. But uh, the smuggling seems to be very rife, Shahan. All right, thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Yusuf Abramji is from Make SA Safe.